Is your Angular app loading content users never see? Let's fix that. In this tutorial, we'll boost performance with deferred loading and add sleek animations to make components pop as they enter the viewport. Let's dive in. Here's the Angular application that we'll be using for this tutorial. We have a bunch of content with several images mixed in. The bummer here though, is that this page is pretty long and it has multiple of these product images throughout. The user may come to this page, click a product link near the top and never reach the images lower in the page, but they still have to load all the content for those images, even though they never saw them. Well, we're gonna fix this with Angular's new deferred loading concept. And when we do, we'll also enhance the user's experience a little by adding a cool animation for them as they enter the view. First, we need to understand how it works though, right? Let's look at the page component. This is the component that contains all of the content that we're seeing here. Sprinkled throughout this content, we can see this product container component. This is the component that loads these product images, so let's take a closer look. Okay, this component is super simple. It just includes another product component. It also includes the basic style to contain these image components and float them left or right. Now let's look at the product component. This component is where we display the image and the title of the product. Okay, so that's how everything works right now. Let's add deferred loading to these components and then add the animations. To defer the load of these components, we need to first wrap the product component in a defer block. Then we need to provide the trigger that will let Angular know when to load this component. In this case, we're concerned with when the items enter the viewport. So we can use on viewport. This trigger uses an intersection observer behind the scenes to monitor when the item enters the viewport. The final piece that we need here is an element to monitor for this intersection observer. By default, it uses placeholder content, which will work just fine in our case. So let's add a div with a placeholder class. What we need this placeholder to do is take up the entire space that our product component will to so that we don't see any content reflowing or shifting when switching between the placeholder and the deferred content. So let's switch to our CSS and then let's make sure this placeholder fills 100% of the height and width of the host container. Okay, that should be all we need to properly defer this content. Let's save and make sure. Okay, everything looks the same, right? This means that everything is indeed working. It's just all happening so fast that we can't see the difference. But this should be beneficial to users because they will no longer have to download all of the content for these components when the view is loaded initially. Instead, they will now be lazily loaded and only when needed. Okay, now that we have these properly deferred, let's add the animation. We will add this animation in the product component itself. We start by adding the animations property. Then we need to use the trigger function from the animations module. This trigger requires a name. We'll just call it animation in this case. Okay, next we need to add a transition with the transition function from the animations module. Here we want to animate this component when it enters the DOM. And with Angular animations, we can do this using a special enter alias. Now we're ready to add our animation. 
For this, we'll use the animate function from the animations module. Next, we need a duration for this animation. Let's go with 1.25 seconds. For the animation that I want to add, it's going to have a few different stages. So we'll use the keyframes function from the animations module. Then we'll use the animation style function. We'll start with a scale of 0.7 and opacity of 0.72 will translate negative 300% along the x-axis and for our keyframe animation this will be the starting point so we can give it an offset of 0. Okay that's what we'll start with. Now, the first portion of this animation will be to animate in from the left, scaled down with a reduced opacity. So let's add another style for this. It will have the same scale and opacity, but this time we'll translate to the original position. This portion of the animation will take up 80% of the total animation duration, so we'll add an offset of 0.8. Okay, now we need one more style for our final state. This time it will be fully scaled up, fully opaque, not translated, and its offset will be 1. Okay, that should be everything that we need for the animation itself. Now all that's left is to add the trigger to the component host. For this, we can use the host property. Then we just bind our animation trigger with the at symbol and we'll use an empty string for the value of this. This will just ensure that the animation is properly added to the host and will run whenever the component enters the view. In our case, this will happen when the defer block fires and shows the deferred content. Okay, that's it. Let's save and see how it looks now. Nice, now as we scroll down, each of these components animate as they enter the viewport. This is a pretty nice effect. Of course, this example is pretty simple. I'm sure you could take it much further depending on how creative you are. So that's it. We've successfully optimized our Angular app by using deferred loading to improve performance and added smooth animations to enhance the user experience. This approach not only reduces unnecessary loading, but also keeps your app feeling modern and engaging. I hope this tutorial helps you level up your Angular skills. If you found it useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Angular tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching.